Good morning, everybody. It's Sunday morning here in London. This is Lizzie and Justin from Third Space. We are back again for another week of our Turning Towards Life project. Lizzie, this is week 180. Somehow that seems and feels significant. Um, <laughs> Only because we've got 10 fingers and 10 toes and things, and it's a multiple of 10. But um, it, we've been doing this for a long time and uh, feels like an ordinary, everyday, and yet very sacred uh, practice for me. I know for you too, Lizzie, in our lives. And so I want to say thank you to you that we're doing this, but also good morning to everybody, good afternoon, good evening to everyone who's with us wherever you are in the world, whether you're with us live, whether you're watching us later in our Facebook group, which everybody is welcome to ask to join. It's a great conversation that goes on there or on Instagram or on YouTube or on our website, lots of places in our podcast that you can find us. And wherever anyone is listening, um, even many weeks or years, ahead this is a completely live conversation we never know which way it's going to go and we start with a source like a seed or a trailhead or a bubbling spring in the writing of some other person and then we see what emerges in between us in conversation and I'm really grateful Lizzie for this uh, Wendell Berry source that you've chosen for us today. Mm. Good morning everybody and it's so wonderful to be here and each time we sign in and say hello I feel us kind of entering into a realm of some kind and a great kind of joy arises to me for me to be here so thank you for all of this and for you Justin that we're doing it as well so this Wendell Berry poem uh, by the way, bringing this because it's completely flummoxing for me to read it. You know, one of those ones <laughs> I thought, well, it's really meaningful to me, but I also can't get my head around it. So we thought that it would be a really great one for us to kind of lead ourselves into and not know what it's even about, really. But the, the first line just kind of really pulled me in. And then I thought, well, we have to talk about this one. So here we go. I'm going to read this lovely Wendell Berry poem. Loving you has taught me the infinite longing of the self to be given away and the great difficulty of that entire giving. For in love, to give is to receive, and then there is yet more to give. And others have been born of our giving, to whom the self generated, sorry, greatened by gifts must be given. And by that giving be increased, until self-burdened, the self, staggering upwards in years, in fear, hope, love and sorrow, imagines rising like a moon, a pale moon risen in daylight over the dark woods, the self whose gift we and all others are, the self that is by definition given. I'm uh, really with you about being flummoxed by this poem Lizzie and it's so good feels like such an excellent thing to do to jump in together to something that is once at once so inviting and so discombobulating and confusing mm -hmm. so I'm glad to be taking on something hard together <clears throat> it's also it's got a fascinating title it's called 15 in Roman numerals and I maybe you know more than me about why it's called that I have no idea so 15 by Wendell Berry. Loving you has taught me the infinite longing of the self to be given away and the great difficulty of that entire giving. For in love to give is to receive and then there is yet more to give. And others have been born of our giving, to whom the self, greatened by gifts, must be given. By that giving be increased until self-burdened the self, staggering upwards in years in fear, hope, love and sorrow, imagines rising like a moon, a pale moon, 
risen in daylight over the dark woods, the self, whose gift we and all others are, the self that is by definition given. Thank you. My goodness, receiving that from you, it, it's like being kind of thrown around or something. <laughs> it's quite amazing. And I'm feeling very, very moved by this infinite longing of the self to be given away. And it, and it's us that is by our very nature, the giving. And so the thing that arises for me as, as often with all of this stuff is the, you know, is the opposite of this. So, so this feeling, this longing of the self to be given away the opposite of that for me is a sense of lack or, or, or clinging or holding on. And yet I know this longing so deeply to, 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 to be the, the given awareness. And so, and what a gift that other people being there who we love give us in terms of the opportunity to be the given awareness, as in how I give myself to you, feels like an expression of my infinite longing. And somehow it really addresses for me like any feeling of sacrifice or resentment because it, it highlights the, the innate longing to be, not even to, to, to be giving, meaning like to do things that are giving, but to be giving, to be givingness. And to be in receipt and those two things being the same thing, this exchange, this continual exchange. To have it written like this and to feel into the, the longing of the self to be given away. I don't know, it feels like it kind of grows the world for me. It grows my, my understanding of when I give and feel resentful or I give and I feel that I'm not getting back the thing that I want to get back or something. To have it articulated that it all comes from this place of longing. Really... I don't know, I feel really seen by that. Like I feel really validated in that sensitivity, but also in hope and by this acknowledgement of our innate nature, the self that is by definition given. It, it's just, it, it, whichever way it's going, it's our nature. Whether we're receiving because something is given or we're giving it, and then it being received, like it, the, the boundary between those things seems to be disappearing in the reading of this because of our innate nature being addressed like that, like the way that we're not very saying. For anyone who is listening, Lizzie, later and can't see us, so who's not watching us or on seeing us on YouTube or Instagram or something, you made this really beautiful and extraordinary gesture just now. And I don't know if you saw it yourself, you did a a figure of eight with your hands as you were giving and receiving. And it reminded me of um, something Parker Palmer says, we've read Parker Palmer before, and he talks about the Mobius strip. And the Mobius strip is, you know, one of these strips of paper and you turn one end and you glue them together so that the inside and the outside, you trace around the inside and it becomes the outside and the outside becomes the inside. So it's like a figure of eight, but it goes back in on itself. And I had the strongest sense of that in, in how you gestured and also in what you're saying. Um, and I, I so recognize this, just it really in the first three lines of Wendell's poem, the infinite longing of the self to be given away and the great difficulty of it. Mm -hmm. And I, 
gosh, do I know this? I know. Actually, what I wanted to say was, I'm feeling it right now, being in this conversation with you. I think one of the great joys of this conversation has been is that it's a project in giving and receiving. We get to receive, mm -hmm. give of ourselves and receive of one another and receive ourselves and give more widely than you and me and receive from other. It's a it's a great big endeavor of this. And when I whenever I do this with another person or with other people, when we're in the realm of giving of ourselves, the sort of um, round of giving, like you said, that's that's not exactly the same as I'll do a task for you or I'll do a favor for you, although that can be included in it is something prior to that. It's like my sense of it is like willing to be open enough of ourselves that are the gift of who we are and the qualities, the unique qualities of who we are and the aliveness of who we are gets to flow forth and touch other people, that kind of giving. It's so, um, it's such a relief for me. It's so welcome. And I, I long for it so much for this being reciprocal. And there are so many parts of me that shy away from it. Mm -hmm. You know, I can feel the, the parts of me that will go, you know, just at home, Davina, who I'm married to, will ask me something about myself and I can feel a part of me that goes, no, 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 don't say anything. And it's not because I'm afraid of saying something or anything like that. It's like, it's hard to, it's hard to be open hearted. It's tender. And there are parts of me that go, no, she doesn't really want to know, or I don't even know if I really want to say, and how interesting could it be? And I'd feel much better if I just stayed very, very quiet. And I, I am easily a very, very quiet person on my own person. And there are gifts in that too. But I, I, I think um, Wendell Berry's language is so excellent here, the infinite longing of the self to be given away. I, underneath all of our objections mm. and our defences and our... I think we infinitely long to be given away, to give ourselves away, and to discover that to give is to receive. That as I give my give of myself to you now, I receive you and I receive me. This language yeah. you've often used, Lizzie, about receiving ourselves. And I wondered whilst you were talking about it, I wondered if part of what this is, part of the difficulty is, we have separate bodies and we have a private part of our own experience that we carry with us that only we can know because we have the unique viewpoint of being the ones who, whose lives are brought forth, supported by these bodies. So we have a unique perspective that no one else has. But at the same time, we're all um, expressions of something way, way, way bigger. I mean, the whole the whole endeavour of life itself, or if we just go come even closer, like what it is to be a biological human, never happened separately from anybody. And you, you may have, you were born at a different time from me in a different place to a different family, and you've had your own life experiences, and our lives have interacted over the last quite some long time in lots and lots of ways, and yet, of course, we can, we're separate, and yet... I can only be me and you can only be you because we share the same biology and the same heritage and the same not very very far back we it becomes in, in, in unknowable what separates what you came from and what i came from and i think we know this at a very very deep level we we mm. long for our understanding that we are not separate and there's the tension and the you know the longing and the difficulty in it mm. Yeah, I really feel that the further back you go, the less you can find the separation feeling. And as you were talking, I was just wondering what it would be to move through the world and relationship with the question, what, what's this person trying to give me? You know, if this is the longing to be given away, 
if it's if I can feel it in myself and we're working with a definition of the self so that the self is is by definition given what a different question it is so so instead of you know what, what what's what are you trying to get from me it's a really different orientation to what are you trying to give me so so as you said like whatever my defenses are whatever my resistance is what is it that someone is trying to give me however however that's wrapped however they are wrapping themselves up in this moment whatever they're bringing what if there's a place in all of us that's trying to give all the time no matter what we're doing no matter how it's manifesting and how would i then respond so i can think of so many times when i feel like what's coming towards me is a a criticism or a something that makes me feel defensive or on the kind of yeah like I've got to do something to maintain my position or something but if I let this question settle into myself and see if I can bring it with me inside of all of the things that happen in my life what is trying to be given here now I, I wonder about just how different what I would receive would be if that was my question. So what are you trying to give me right now? And what, what is there to be received versus what is there to defend? Or when this, you know, when, when something kind of rubs up against my sense of self and I feel hard done by, or I feel misunderstood or unseen, what kind of undoing it might be to ask the question, what are you trying to give me right now? And how honoring that might be of a person. And how undoing it might be of whatever my side of an unhelpful dynamic, like how that would shift things to approach all our, our relationships with that question of what are you trying to give me and what is there to be received here? You said um, something like, in this wonderful invitation you just made, you said something like, what if I didn't try to maintain my position? And I had the strongest sense, glimpse whilst you were talking of something that has been just off to one side whilst we've been talking, <laughs> it's now mm -hmm. come to the middle. So I think that in, implied in what you were saying, clearly to me and in what Wendell Berry is writing that ourselves what it is the thing the something that we call ourselves is not a thing it's a process it's an unfolding so if I think of myself as a thing I've got myself and I do often this often just feels like the way I am right I've got myself and I kind of know something about myself and there are parts of myself that I want to protect and parts that I'm embarrassed about and parts that feel tender and but it's a thing then when you someone who I care about and who we have a lots of openness in a relationship bring me something it would be really easy to take it as um not as a gift actually because there's openness between us but as a and as an assault on myself, like what you're saying is going to damage myself that I'm trying so hard to protect this thing that I have. <laughs> so I have to take a position and I have to. But I, th I think that what Wendell Berry is showing us in his excellent language is that our self is not a thing. It's a unfolding process made from giving. Yeah. There wasn't a self. When I think when when we're really teeny weeny, we come in with bodies, but we don't yet have much of a self. We're just you know, ourselves are sort of on their way when we arrive into the world. And one of the ways they're on their way is from us, our own experiences in our bodies. And the other way, way they're on their way is from everything and everyone we meet and we experience. And ourselves are formed and they keep on forming. And he says this, he says, our, um, our, uh, ourselves born of giving and they're greatened by gifts. Mm. so so the shift the really big kind of conceptual shift 
which for me supports what you're saying is when you when you bring something to me or anyone else particularly close in people because that's where i feel it the most it's easier to keep other people at arm's length instead of this is an attack instead of this is something i have to shore myself my precious unchanging self up against your whatever it is you have to say which might be an expression of great affection or might be an observation or might be a request or might be is to do exactly what you just said, Lizzie, is to, is to see, can I take this as a gift in, in the ongoing um, unfolding of the self that I don't own? Mm. I don't own myself. I can possess myself. I can, you know, take, seize myself. I can, I can express myself. But I don't actually think that myself is mine. It's being mm. born of this of this great um, experiment of life that we're all in, and in particular, it's being born by born from everyone I come across, and everyone I spend my time with, and everybody I love, and everyone I care about. And now I understand a line just in saying this, something I didn't understand in Wendell Berry's poem, where he says, um, uh, "See if I can find it." Others have been born of our giving to whom the self greatened by gifts must be given and i thought he must mean parenthood he must be writing to someone with whom he's had children and now mm. i think no could be but i can see from what you're saying that when we bring ourselves when we allow ourselves to to give of our mysterious selves that aren't really ours that are being unfolded through our own lives Others get born of our giving, just like we got born. Yeah. Every time we got to be allow ourselves to be affected by anyone else who was around us. Mm. Yeah. So I'm feeling really um, grateful for this way of speaking about being a being a being of this kind. And it, I think we went into this maybe a couple of weeks ago here as well about us making each other it's the same thing and to feel like I'm watching how I have been greatened by gifts and people are greatened by my gifts too it feels like such possibility exists in life rather than the narrative of I am who I am and this is how things are. And in my body in the moment, I, 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 I could so remember and often have that experience of, well, you know, there's nothing I can do. This is, this is, this is my lot or something, and this is what I'm like. And then the liberation of feeling this world of being made and making suddenly a whole new set of somethings become available. You know, um, a way of feeling my mattering. What I do matters and who I am to you matters because you're greatened by my gifts and as I am greatened by yours. Like we're not independent orbital people we're not orbiting each other held held apart by some force we're we're much more as you say like a process within each other's fields you know we're we're affecting each other all the time and so to walk to walk this path of being affected and affecting others feels like such a helpful creative narrative about being a person rather than the stuck fixed frightened small separate self that it's so easy to become and so it feels like uh you know as we stagger upwards in our years in fear hope love and sorrow we can have this background narrative of what it means to be ourselves and to be with other people and who we make each other into that 
I don't know, it just feels very, very freeing, very creative, like a whole different way than is usual, than, than has been given in, in our kind of broader way of having been taught things. So that you affect me and I affect you and let that be true. And for me to really, really, really feel into what you're trying to give me. Like, what would it mean if I really received you? And I really received myself. Like, what? Yeah, that feels like a really different kind of life than this is just the way I am and that's the way you are and we're either compatible or we're not. Mm -hmm. Well, the part of this that is feeling very alive in me, Lizzie, as you're, te as you're talking, teaching, that's what I was going to say, which you are, me and talking with me is I've is um uh Wendell Berry's last line the self who's I'm going to read it slowly the self whose gift we and all others are yeah the self that is by definition given I can feel a a sort of big undoing because it's so familiar and so obvious, I think because of the way we have bodies actually, to treat myself as if it were me and I made it, I made mm -hmm. this. It's instead of, I could feel the giantest invitation in what you're saying. If I sit here with you and I know that myself, this something that I am, if I can keep on remembering that this was given to me, myself was given by you and all the people who I love and who love me and by many hundreds and thousands and millions of others. It was all given. Mm -hmm. Language was given. Like somebody, people gave us language by mm -hmm. talking to us and listening to us and yeah. that it was all given then I've got so much more of a chance of doing just what you were saying, of treating you like you're another giving that is making me and you, and that I am another giving that is making me and you. Mm -hmm. And to know myself that way, it's a completely different way of knowing mm -hmm. what I am. And it feels so um, rich and alive and full of possibilities. And in this time where so many things are changing for example where we're asking big questions about inclusion and equity and how the structures of our society have favored some people and not others and all of those kind of things i can feel how one of the things that this orientation might make possible is that when i meet anyone and get into a conversation that calls into question things I've taken for granted. Instead of going, oh, I have to protect this self that is a particular thing, maybe I can go much more. Mm. I can be changed by this interaction. Mm. I can be given to and can give. Not, not I'll be smashed by it or destroyed by it, but I'll, because that's again in the narrative of there's a something I have to protect, but I can, I can receive here and the self that is given to me will become different. Yes. Because I got to receive from whatever it was you wanted to bring me, whether it's personal or about the culture I've been in. Yeah. That feels to me like an enormous and very, very kind and very necessary kind of liberation. Mm. And I'm noticing my longing, as you say that, Justin, to be someone who, when those things do get brought and whatever conversation we end up having, I really long when those defensive parts come forward in me, I really do long to go, thank you for being here. And could I just hold you slightly to the side so that I get a bit more sight on the thing that's trying to be given? Because if I keep you central, if I keep this defensive part central, it's like a shield through which no, nothing of the giving can get in towards me. So nothing can get close to me if I've got this defense up. And I know sometimes I find that really hard to put to one side and I walk away or I shut down or I withdraw or fight, whatever I am up to that day. 
but I notice I really long to put it to one side. You know, I really do. Like I really, when I look back retrospectively too, I can see, oh, I missed that. I missed what was trying to be given because something arose that I couldn't move enough to the side to kind of get a sight on the what there is to be received and that's being given. So I'm really appreciating this conversation for the possibility that it opens up, that you're a giving and I'm a giving and everyone is a giving. And noticing my relationship to it, that it's a very longing relationship to receive what's being given in, in each giving, each person giving this. I really do long to know what that is. And so anything that gets in the way of that feels like a very important thing to work with and, and to know that it's possible that even though I feel taken with my defence, taken with my fight, it's only a part of me and there's much more going on than just that. Much more going on, much probably a lot more interesting, a lot less repetitive as well. <laughs> you know there's something about my defenses that are like oh it's the same thing again here we are again same thing again same thing again but putting that to the side and being in the realm of the givingness that doesn't feel monotonous that doesn't feel that kind of kind of you know being sick of myself for keeping on with the same things it feels alive and intriguing and filled with longing and wondering and curiosity so I feel this new kind of rising dedication to that question of forgivingness and, and really grateful for Wendell Berry for putting it in this beautifully discombobulating way that is just the kind of discombobulation that's needed to kind of find space between things that we can then see through the cracks to the givingness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All of that. <laughs> and last last thing I want to say is I, what you just said reminded me of something that um, another poet whose work we've drawn on here in Turning Towards Life, David White, says, mm. which is that it really helps us to get thoroughly bored of ourselves. Yeah. And um, mm. I'm uh, what you said is really useful to me, actually, because that that feeling of feeling sickened by my own rigidity and repetitiveness, but still kind of like putting it out front. <laughs> <laughs> it's really useful tension to feel like here I go again doing that ordinary thing I've done a million times which is to put something out front that's going to stop me from being affected by you and at the same time I'm really bored by it and I feel kind of sick and that's that's yeah. I'm reminded that it's really helpful to notice that and that might be a point to go okay mm -hmm. what would be alive here even if it felt really risky what would be alive yeah. rather than yeah dead and fixed and repetitive so a question mm. i'll take away mm. into my day today my goodness well thank you justin as always thank you wendell berry thank you everybody for joining us and being here and being in the discombobulation and the questioning and the and the givingness thank you for your givingness and i know and feel very strongly that when we're being listened to justin there's a big generosity that comes right back at us and i feel very committed to receiving that. So I want to thank everybody for the generosity that you have in your hearts towards us, because it is very much a part of this field that makes this very much possible and makes it the alive space that it is as well. So I want to say thank you and thank you to us for being here too. And we will be back next week on Sunday at nine o'clock as usual on Facebook. And we're also on Instagram now with our videos each week, if that's a preferable place for you to listen and obviously on our podcasts as well. So thank you everybody. And we will see you next week. See you then. Bye. Bye.